Welcome again to a short stop with a short stop. Have you ever thought about peer pressure, especially you young, t young teenagers and, and college age students? Have you ever hung around with friends that tried to pressure you into doing something that you knew wasn't right, that was going to be sinful, and you eventually allowed them to do that? that that's called peer pressure. Early on after I became a Christian, uh, I was in Cincinnati. We went there to play the Big Red Machine. And uh, I was down on the ballpark at Riverfront Stadium and Davey Concepcion was out there, a, a player that I kind of patterned my career after. And he was the shortstop for the Cincinnati Reds. And I was talking to him during batting practice. I told him, I said, Davey, I'm gonna send the bat boy over with a ball and get you to sign it for me. And he said, no problem. So. I went into our locker room, got the bat boy, and gave him a baseball. I said, Davey's waiting on you over there in his locker room. He's going to sign it. Would you please bring that ball back to me? And he said, no problem. So he went over and uh, got Davey to sign the ball. He not only signed it, but he wrote, I mean, one of the nicest notes on the, on the baseball that you could ever imagine another player writing to another player. And I was really pleased with that, and I've still got that baseball at home. But later on, after that game, that night, uh, I used to have to leave 30, 40 tickets for my family and friends at Cincinnati. But later, later that night, we went over to a restaurant called The Islands. It was a, a boat that was actually out, anchored in the Ohio River. And it was a, a nice boat. It was on the Covington side, on the Kentucky side. And I probably had... Uh, 12 to 14 of my family members at the table with me where we were eating. And all of a sudden, uh, the maitre d', uh, the head waiter in this uh, restaurant, he had a towel, a white towel over his arm and he walked over to my table and he had a bottle of wine. I said, we didn't order any. He said, I know. He said, I know. He said, Mr. Davy Concepcion is a few tables over and he sent this over to you all. And where do you think all those 14 sets of eyes were looking at when this maitre d' is offering me a bottle of wine? And I'm a young Christian and they know that I don't drink. I mean, it was just like frozen eyes. What's he going to do now? So I, I told the maitre d', I said, please take it back to him and tell him, that I don't drink, and I will talk to him later on about the situation. But here is the big part of that. Eight people that were sitting at that table have now obeyed that gospel plan of salvation that were not Christians. Now, did that one thing make them or persuade them to become a Christian? Not probably just that one thing, but could that have one thing persuaded them to have never even thought about becoming a Christian? Because they said, well, look at that hypocrite. What's he saying? He doesn't drink, but he's going to go ahead and take that wine. But eight people that were sitting at my table, and they were all family members, all became a New Testament Christian. They obeyed the gospel plan of salvation in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 33, it says, Do not be deceived. Bad company corrupts good morals. Now, what does that mean? A lot of times, some of the friends or people that you young teenagers or college age, or even some of you adults that may hang around, you know that they've got bad morals. They, you know that some of the things that they do are corrupt. If you hang around them long enough, you're going to become immune to some of the things that they do. And as the longer that you hang around them, the more apt that you are to do the exact same thing that they're doing. 
And corrupt friends will corrupt good morals. And we need to have friends that are going to help us get to heaven. It's been said that you show me your friends and I will show you exactly who you are. Sin will take you farther than you want to go. Sin will keep you longer than you want to stay. But good friends can help you to get to heaven. Good friends that have good morals. That way you won't be having to partake or even pressured with the peer pressure to try to do something that you don't want to do. But Davies Concepcion was a great ball player, and he was one of my idols growing up. And I think at that time, he was probably just trying to be friendly with me, not trying to be uh, a, a peer pressure type of person. But yet, there was peer pressure on me with my family, whether I accepted the wine or whether I declined the wine. And I want to read Proverbs chapter 23, verses 29 through 35. And it's talking about alcohol. Said, so who has woe? Who has sorrow? Who has contentions? Who has complainings? Who has wounds without cause? Who has the redness of eyes? Those who linger long over wine. Those uh, do not look on the wine when it is red, when it sparkles in the cup, when it goes down smoothly. At the last it bites like a serpent and stings like a viper. Your eyes will see strange things, and your mind will utter perverse things. And you will be like one of, who lies down in the middle of the sea, or like one who lies down on the top of a mast. They struck me, but I did not become ill. They beat me, but I did not know it. When shall I awake? I will seek another drink. And the last verse that I want to leave you with is Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33. And it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Seek good friends. Don't let peer pressure bother you in any way. And if you seek good friends, it won't. And again, thank you for being with a shortstop with a shortstop.